If you think that the flat earth theory is crazy, you might want to call ancient Greeks crazy. This is because the people of ancient Greece believed that the earth was flat. Yes, the earth is described as a flat disk in Greek cosmography, with the river Oceanus wrapping around it entirely and the Aegean Sea in the absolute center. To reach Oceanus, one had to journey to the furthest extremities of the earth. This god was the source of water for every lake, stream, river, spring, and rain cloud. And as you might have guessed, the word ocean has been derived from his name. Naturally, this god must have been highly significant for the ancient Greeks. But what was his story? And was he really vast enough to give a sense of Earth being flat? Oceanus is a major deity in Greek mythology, but his presence, as well as his existence of other important gods, has been wiped under the rug by most modern interpretations that limit Greek mythology to the twelve Olympians alone. With his fish-like tail and crab-claw horns, Oceanus reigned over a mystical river that surrounded the Earth, free from the concerns of man and divine alike. He is attributed as being the father of rivers, wells, streams, and fountains, while being an unusually stoic immortal by Greek religious standards. This indicates that without Oceanus, humanity would have little means to survive. But is he the main god that commands the ocean? Nope. Okay, so it may not be that simple, but bear with us as we explain. Oceanus is the god of a mythical, massive river by the same name. The ocean is the name given to both the deity and the river, both of which are portrayed as the source of the world's water supply, although only later interpretations of mythology see Oceanus as a literal ocean. Oceanus is effectively the deity of the river Oceanus because he is the river. On that note, his progenitors being river gods, ocean nymphs, and cloud nymphs makes it a lot more sense. At the end of the day, all rivers, wells, streams, and fountains originated in Oceanus and will return there. Furthermore, Oceanus is said to be the power that ruled celestial bodies. In their respective Homeric hymns, Helios, the Greek sun god, and Selene, the moon, were believed to rise and set in his seas for repose. Details about Oceanus' position also has us understand how the ancient Greeks saw themselves, especially in comparison to the rest of the globe. In Theogony, the Garden of the Asperides lies far north, beyond the vast river. Meanwhile, to the westernmost region beyond Oceanus was a shadowy land Homer referred to as Humeria, which was thought to house the entrance to the underworld. Otherwise, Perseus' achievements have the Greek hero travel to Oceanus to battle the Gorgons, and Odysseus' journey home in Odyssey took him through the enormous waters of Oceanus. Some scholars believe that the river Oceanus was the Atlantic Ocean that we know today, and that the river was their best cosmographical explanation for the seemingly limitless western sea that seemed to engulf their known universe. Now, unlike Zeus or Poseidon, who were Olympians, Oceanus was a titan. He was one of the twelve titans born to Gaia, the primal earth goddess, and Uranus, the Greek deity of the sky and the heavens. In fact, he was the oldest titan, and also the most aloof. He didn't even part in the Theogony when the Titans killed their father, Uranus. Only Cronus, the youngest Titan, was willing to act when Uranus imprisoned the Cyclops and Hecatoncheries and inflicted severe misery on Gaia, their mother. At some point in time, Oceanus got married to his equally reclusive youngest sister, Tethys, the eleventh-born Titan. The couple became the parents of numerous rivers, streams, wells, and nymphs, making them one of the many power couples scattered throughout Greek mythology. According to Theogony, Oceanus and Tethys had 3,000 neat ankled daughters, and at least as many boys. Why is this an important piece of information, you ask? Well, because Oceanus was a mysterious deity, and he derived much of his fame from the achievements of his many children. His daughters, the goddess Metis and Eurynome, were among the famous mistresses of Zeus. When Metis got pregnant, she was swallowed by Zeus after a prophecy predicted that one of his offspring would overtake him. She gave birth to Athena while imprisoned by her husband. After appearing as the world's worst migraine, the shield-wielding goddess emerged from her father's brain. In the meantime, Eurynome became the mother of the three charities, gods of beauty and merriment, who served as Aphrodite's attendants. A few years later, the Titanomachy took place. It was a ten-year war between the older Titan generation and the younger Olympian gods. The outcome was to determine who would control the universe once and for all. Just as he did during his father's violent overthrow, Oceanus kept his head down during the Titanomachy's turbulent years. That's right, Oceanus is also a god of minding his own business. This would be a victory in and of itself, especially given the drama that plagues the rest of the family tree. In all seriousness, Oceanus is frequently described as a neutral party, and, if not completely impartial, he is at least discreet in playing his cards and revealing his actual allegiances. 
In general, his neutrality is implied by his absence from popular Titanomachy stories. Hera indicates in the Iliad that she lived with Oceanus and his wife, Tethys, during the Titanomachy, acting as her foster parents for ten years. If that doesn't solidify Oceanus as an Olympian ally, Hesiod's Theogony will. According to the work, Styx and her offspring were the first to arrive at Olympus to offer their assistance during the Titanomachy. Oceanus gave the impression of impartiality by sending his daughter to help the Olympians rather than actively supporting them himself. Whether Oceanus' absence during the Titanomachy was due to his own detachment from his family's worldly difficulties, a big brain political move, or fear of Cronus or Zeus, Homer's Odyssey does indicate that, despite Oceanus' tremendous power over water, even Oceanus was scared of great Zeus's lightning. But Oceanus did make a brief cameo in Aeschylus' tragic drama Prometheus Bound, which was composed about 480 BCE. The play takes place after the primary events of the Prometheus myth and begins with Hephaestus chaining Prometheus to a mountain as punishment for bringing fire to man against Zeus's wishes. Oceanus is the first of the gods to come to Prometheus in his hour of need. Aeschylus portrays an aged Oceanus interrupting Prometheus' soliloquy on a chariot drawn by a griffin to counsel him to be less rebellious. After all, he is Prometheus' grandpa through his daughter Clymene's relationship with Iapetus. Leave it to him to arrive with sage advice for his ill-fortuned progeny, as unwelcomed as he was. He does this again with Heracles during the Twelve Labors. During Heracles' tenth labor, when the hero sought to capture the red candle of Gerion, a hideous three-headed monster, the otherwise aloof deity unexpectedly confronted Heracles. Oceanus viciously shook his improvised ship, while the demigod journeyed across the sea in Helios's goblet, and only stopped the bullying when threatened with the hero's bow and arrow. Now, you might be wondering where Poseidon stands, considering the fact that Oceanus is the god of rivers. When looking at Greek mythology, a lot of gods have overlapping realms of influence, which makes it pretty easy to get the deities confused with one another. Both gods are tied to the sea in some way, and both wield a trident. So who is the god of the aquatic world? This is where the similarities end. Poseidon is the Greek deity of the sea in earthquakes. Oceanus, on the other hand, is the personification of the sea as an all-encompassing river. He is from the Titan's old ruling generation and never leaves his underwater habitats, and he barely even possesses a human shape. To really drive this idea home, since Oceanus is the ocean itself, he doesn't quite have a god that he can be equated with. But Poseidon is the most comparable to Nereus, the previous god of the sea and the son of Gaia and Pontus, with Neptune serving as his Roman counterpart. So yes, Poseidon is still your one true king of the water, but our guy Oceanus is the real deal. And this sums up the video. Smash the like and subscribe button if you enjoyed it. See you next time. Until then, stay mythically mad.